All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we have uh, Brother Kwaku here. Now, you remember all the advertising has been running about the Ghana trip, and let me tell you about that. Cecil Global and African Diaspora News Channel presents the Ghana Luxury Property Tour. It will be a eight day tour coming to you starting October 1 through October 8, 2023. Now you enjoy a five-star stay at a hotel, the finest properties in Ghana. You connect with industry professionals. You will also visit cultural landmarks, have a meet and greet with the team and so much more. Make sure that you go to the description box below and hit that link, just sign up. So for years, you know, I always went to Kenya, South Africa, and many of you kept saying, why don't y'all do a trip to Ghana? Why don't y'all do a trip to Ghana? Y'all been saying it for a few years. Now that has opened up a trip to Ghana and, um, I, and brother Kwaku will talk about, you know, how many people have been reaching out to him, but this is a trip that a lot of you have requested. And, um, but we're getting to some things that I want to talk about with the trip itself and, and what's going on. But, but Kwaku, thank you for joining us on the show. Once again, brother. Hey, this is a real, real pleasure to be on here. I, I do watch your show. I, I watch the YouTube and I love what you guys are doing because it's very, very important. There's never been a better time to connect between really the coast to coast, the diaspora, the the the, uh, 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 the people, the family between the two coasts. There's never been a better time than now. And I'm really happy to be working with you all on this particular trip, which I think is, you know, an elevated trip, much, much more elevated than just you know, a, a tourism trip to to the to the continent. It's something where you're going to build uh, n not just f uh, sort of a friendly ties, but potentially business and lifelong ties as well. And so, you know, really happy to be on here. Thank you. All right, Koi cool. This, all right, so let's let's get to the trip itself because you know we've been just advertising it, but but just get, give us the rundown on what is going to be actually done. You know, while there, okay, they they booked the trip. You're going. You you flying out? Just 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 give us like a, just a quick synopsis because maybe some things isn't clear, and, and I like you to clear those things up. Thank you for that question. So this is the Ghana Luxury Property Tour, and really what this tour and this is a tour we've put together already in the past year already very successfully. But what this tour really entails, it's a trip to Ghana for eight day stay at a luxury luxury hotels. The Moving Pick Hotel, which is a luxury five-star hotel in Ghana, you'll you'll get sort of room, food, uh, breakfast, and dinner as well attached to this. But added to that, we'll be taking you all on tours to different real estate developments in Ghana, right in Accra, uh, in the capital. Uh, and really, what that will provide you with is a real insight into the development of the country and what's available to do, what's available to those. Who either really want to maybe retire potentially on the continent, those who are interested in investment opportunities, right? Uh, whether it's passive investment, Airbnb type investment, or, or those who really want to put, you know, it's a, a, a real stake in the ground and be a part of this uh, um, of, of sort of a story, which is which sort of came from the year of return and really has become now beyond the return, where there's a lot happening in the back end there uh, uh, in terms of investment into the country. And what I love is it's, it's investment coming from uh, a lot of African-Americans, right? Um, and so we'll take care of your flights from New York to Ghana, right, and back. Uh, we'll take care of, obviously, the hotel. We'll take care of the, the logistics on the ground in terms of any transportation from place to place. And then, of course, we'll connect you to some very wonderful people, people from the government, from banks, uh, real estate developers, some celebrities potentially as well, right? And really what you find also is a family there of African-Americans who are already there, who are willing to connect with you as well and will help you understand their story, why they decided to come there, how they're doing there, what the realities are on the ground and what the opportunities are as well for you. So uh, it's going to be a magical trip. And we've done this a million times. People tend to cry. People tend to laugh. Uh, um, and it's a good time as well. Added to all of that education. No, you know, the, and I want to clear some things up because, you know, there's been some videos that came out. Um, in, I, I think it was one out of Ghana not too long ago. And this guy either had a, uh, you know, I think he had some land and and I think they was mowing, they was knocking down his house and doing all kinds of things. And of course, you know, when the Internet sees that, 
um, you know, the the tractor is going to say, see, see, that's why y'all don't want to go over there. Look what them people doing to y'all. So with that being said, um, because you're talking about property and, and I'm asking that question because the detractors will show up um, when you talk about property. So the property you're showing, is it cleared for, for, for that building to be there? If the person purchased it, would it be a problem later or anything down the line? I just want you to clear that up because, you know, when people see one video and don't know really everything that goes along with it, um, they try to, because, you know, unfortunately, a lot of us have these anti-black sentiments. We do. Um, black people get scammed all the time by everybody. Oh, yes, they do. But you know how we magnify it if it's black folks, and we definitely going to magnify it if it's in, in the continent of Africa, right? So could you maybe clear that up? So if a person gets a property, they go on this tour, and they say, you know what? I want to get something. Do they have to worry about it? Not at all. And I, I'll say as well, and, you know, apologies, but I should have also just introduced my company, Cecil Global, as well, right? And what we do on the ground, right? And so I, I serve as chief commercial officer for this company. We've been operating in Ghana and in Nigeria since 2018, right? And really for us, it, the core tenant has been trust, transparency, and technology. This is what we infuse all together to create an experience for our customers, right? Both local and abroad. And really the, the, the opportunity for us was exactly that, the issue. And let's be quite frank. Yes, there, have, there, there, there are issues of scamming. There are issues of fraud uh, with respect to real estate in Ghana, right? And this is something that has happened for, for a long time and has affected even Ghanaians who are living abroad. And so I, I don't want to even deny that at all. But what we really have understood is that there's still a massive opportunity. I've, I, was, I was born and raised in Ghana. I've lived in many different homes in and around Accra. You know, my parents have purchased different homes at, at, at different locations in and around Accra, and they've all been legitimate, right? Uh, and so what that tells you, it tells you is that there are trustworthy partners on the ground. There are legitimate partners on the ground. And really, you, uh, your mind should not be sullied by the bad apples that are out there because there will be, right? And so what we really try to do and what we've done, we work with now about 80 developers in Ghana. We have about 20,000 verified units on our platform. And what that means is that we go there, we vet their, their uh, land title documents, we vet their company registration documents. We go on site to make sure everything is legitimate before we onboard with them, before we work with them. And even added to this, and you'll find this on the tour, we work with lawyers as well to ensure that even if you don't trust us, you can work with legitimate lawyers on the ground to vet everything there as well, right? To make sure everything, to double check whatever it is that is happening there on the ground. And then we work with banks. And I'll tell you this, the banks will not work with any developer that they have not vetted thoroughly as well, right? And so this is all part of our system to ensure that whatever we're, 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 we're showcasing to our clients is legitimate, has been verified and has been vetted. And, you know, we've been operating since then and haven't had any issues with, it, uh, with anything so far. And what I'll say is that even if we do have an issue, and it, it, it might happen, we just um, uh, we just uh, uh, remove that de development from the platform, right? And so it's it's something that, uh, uh, um, and I like that you pointed it out. At, at the end of the day, you cannot be lost in the fact that yes, there are issues, but those are also opportunities, right? And this is a chance for those uh, um, uh, sort of who are sort of looking into the future to really understand how can they place themselves in a place where they will have a lot of importance, right? They'll be providing a moral good to people and also be making a, a lot of money potentially as well, right? And so that's really how I think you have to look at it. Ghana is not a scary place. I'm very happy that, you know, we had the year of return. People came there and I realized there's nothing to be scared of. You know, in, in a lot of ways, uh, um, um, Accra, Ghana is one of the safest places in the world, right? Uh, um, right. And so understanding that, right, all it really requires is capital, it's know-how, it's connections. And a lot of people, in the United States have this. And so it's great to, to sort of tag that to the opportunity. So I'm very happy you, 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 you brought up that point. Uh, and it's something that we work very hard on. 
uh, to ensure that there is a high level of trust and transparency with our operations. Yeah, and and, and I, I just want to make people just feel comfortable on, on that because, like I said, you have so much coming at you online, you know, you know, from people. And I always say that anytime you deal with anyone, even in the United States, you need to deal with reputable people and, and dot your I's and cross your T's and don't just jump on the first thing you see until, you know, say, let me come back. Let me see. Let me do this because, you know, uh, Quaker, you got people that have just so went to the continent one time and now they're ready to buy some land and they're not even there to watch over anything. They're not there to do anything. So that's, that's why I'm saying we just have to be, you know, a little bit more diligent. And, you know, one thing you, you pointed out, there's a lot of black Americans there, a lot that has moved there, that's doing business there, um, that just uprooted their life. And um, for the black Americans that you have talked to that, that, is an our cry. What, what is their overall like? Are they happy? Are they they transition to the culture? Because you know we coming from a total different culture, and now they go into this culture. So what have you been hearing on that end? Yeah, I know it's very interesting you asked that question. And in fact, one of our, our partners on the tour, who's our logistics partner, it's uh, um, um, founded a company called Land Tours, which is a thirty year company tourism company. Uh, she's an African American woman, very high powered woman there in Ghana and she's been very successful right with her work there and her operations and she's probably uh, runs the number one tourism company in Ghana right which tells you at least one successful story that you can use to emulate but there's a whole host of other people who are you know thriving in Ghana but I, I will say this and it's I, I like that you mentioned dotting sort of uh, dotting your eyes you know crossing your t's but it's also important that whoever is looking to move to Ghana you know, exact works with reputable uh, partners, but also sort of uh, does their education as well and gets to better understand the realities on the ground as well versus what the opportunities, right? And so I, I, what I found is that for those that really thrive are those that maybe came once, you know, sort of studied the terrain, came again, studied the terrain, and then decided to then sort of uh, really sort of set their roots there, or those that have, you know, raised a, 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 um, a, a good amount of savings, you know, as well and then decided that they are coming to live there. I'll give you one example. Uh, there's a great couple, and in fact, uh, they have a, a YouTube page. I'll shout it out. It's called Off the Wheel. Uh, it's a New York couple that purchased a, pro, a sort of a $300,000 penthouse unit, very large unit uh, um, um, with us uh, just last year, and then moved to, to, to Ghana uh, in, in, in October just last year. Um, and what they mentioned to me is this. You know, they purchased their home cash right and what they mentioned to me is that you know in terms ghana is so cheap to live in in terms of you know buy as long as you're buying food from the market and then cooking for yourself he said if i were to lose my job you know have no cash for it at all at the very least i have my own home here you know i can live on rice forever but i'll be i'll be fine i have my own home i am sort of uh, the king of my own castle right um and he's actually working on advising more sort of African-Americans how to be pre better prepare so that when they come to Ghana, you know, they're they are better situated there. And I think that's how you have to look at it, that yes, there are numerous opportunities there. And yes, maybe it's not the best time for you today, but there is a way to plan towards that in the future. And so, yeah, there are a lot of people thriving there. And I, I, I'm very, I'll be very excited to sort of uh, really introduce you to, you know, a few people there that, uh, um, that I live there, show you where they're living, you know, how they're living, you know, and, and they'll give you sort of the, the real lowdown as to what it is, what that transition was uh, um, um, to come live in Ghana and, and really how sort of, a, again, sort of they're thriving within the space because they were best prepared for it, right? And so I think that's an important part of, of it as well. Now, one thing, you know, that it comes up, of course, we talk about West Africa is malaria. So let's talk about our crop, for instance. Yeah. Um, you know, the preparations for that. Do, do you suggest people, you know, go to the doctor and get the pills? Or what do you suggest people to do in, in relation to that? Because what I read about our crop is kind of low for you to get malaria in there versus if you go to the village, it's very high. Yeah. So so what, what do you suggest based on the tour, the terrain of the tour? What, what do you suggest with that? Yeah, of course, uh, go visit your your doctor. I think before that, uh, malaria is a, is, a, is a serious disease that you should take, you should definitely take seriously. Uh, and some people do prefer to take either pills before 
or sort of pills when they come after. Um, um, and of course, there is also the element of uh, of the cream or uh, that you can use on your skin as well to prevent you from uh, from sort of getting bitten by any mosquitoes. Um, I and uh, you know a lot of Ghanaians like to joke about this, uh, but uh, a lot of us have had malaria, uh, you know, a, a few times in our in our life, and uh, you know it's it's something that you can easily survive once you you make sure that once you feel any type of symptoms. You, you take the medicine as well right there and there, right? And so it, it's something that uh, a lot of Ghanaians live with. You know, it's the same bloodline that we all have uh, as well. And so it's, it's important that uh, obviously you check with your doctor, I think, beforehand. But it's also important to understand that it, it's something that it can be easily treatable for just about anyone, right? And these are, I like, I like these questions because these are also questions that you can ask any African-American who's lived there who will tell you that, hey, you know, uh, um, um, it's 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 something that uh, um, uh, is easily treatable. Of course, if you are within Accra, you know, and in areas where it's uh, um, much cleaner, less stagnant water, right? Less mosquitoes around you, right? You don't sort of uh, have mosquitoes around you in, in those areas. So, so typically Accra, you won't. Of course, as you maybe delve into sometimes uh, uh, um, areas that uh, um, uh, where, where they're a bit more stagnant water, uh, et cetera, there are, there are issues of, of mosquitoes. So you'll find that in Accra, the, uh, across Central, you, you won't find that issue as much. But of course, uh, in certain areas, uh, um, we have to be realistic. Uh, uh, mosquitoes can be prevalent, right? And so uh, I think it's always important to check with your doctor. Now, do you suggest, um, with that being said, do you suggest people wear long sleeves? Uh, no, I'll say this. I, I, I would not. You know, Ghana is quite hot. I, I would not uh, suggest that. I, I'll say this. You know, uh, as long as you, I think you take that medicine, I wouldn't worry about mosquitoes. As long as you have, have the scream, that the, sorry, the cream, I also wouldn't worry about mosquito bites, right, uh, um, um, uh, as well, right? And so um, you find that it becomes quite uh, um, uh, uh, normal, and even at some point, uh, the mosquitoes, uh, uh, you even realize that they're, they're there, right? So, uh, um it's, it's something that I think, of course, as you, you go and you live there, you realize uh, how to navigate around it. But uh, I think the day must, uh, malaria is very treatable now, and it's also preventable as well, right? And so if you look at it in that frame, I, I, would, I don't think you need to wear long sleeves. Nothing wrong with wearing long sleeves, though, but uh, I will say for some of you all, Ghana might be a, a, little, a little hot for, for you all, and it might take you a while to adapt to it. It depends on where they come from in the, in the country, because me, I'm down here in, in Houston, and right now it's, it's over 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit with, with humidity. So yeah, they say it's been like 120 here. So, you know, I mean, that heat not really with, I'm used to that. But, you know, like I don't like going out in it too much, right? <laughs> um, I, I can't stand it. But, but what I will say, and I, I've done this just about in every co new country I went to, just go to your travel clinic. The travel mm -hmm. clinic will tell you, say, okay, what country are you going to? Where are you going to be? Yeah. And then they'll kind of suggest to you what, what you may need, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I've, that's what I've always done. I've never had a problem. Yeah. It makes sense. Yes, sir. So, you know, outside, outside of that, um, the, that's, that's something that I want to bring up, um, about, and I mentioned in the beginning that people did request this particular trip, but, you know, some 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 emails and some things that I've been been hearing been quite disappointing. You know, so uh, so far we have you know so many people going, and that's great. And know we're trying to get at least, um, you know, how many more you're trying to get right now? I think we, we have ten more slots, and we want to close this down within one month, right? Okay. Uh, within this, by end of July, we'll close it off for anyone else, right? And uh, um, you, you, you're exactly right, right? In terms of we, we need to plan this appropriately and uh, you know sometimes things do happen uh, but what we are we're sort of uh, within this period we will not take any refunds right for anyone that joins the trip it's very very sort of uh, uh, um, um, difficult in planning out some of these trips and we want to make sure it's, it's the best trip for everyone and so someone reneging or leaving sort of affects you know how you plan for everything uh, as you can probably imagine right but yeah we what we are what we are looking to do is, uh, is, uh, is, is close this off by end of July. And I, I will note this as well, for those that have inquired and come through to the system and, and perhaps are looking for more information, uh, we'll be sending out an email out to you all. And we'll also be sending out uh, invitations to you all 
for two calls in the next coming weeks, one on the weekday, one on the weekend. And so hopefully you can join one or the other. Well, I'll run through uh, sort of the whole trip, right? And, and answer any questions from there for anyone who are, who's interested. And uh, for those that are very, very interested and want to move forward, uh, we, we sort of uh, uh, seek to get your payments in, but it's very important to note that we cannot take any refunds, right, uh, uh, from anyone because it, it just affects, you know, the way you plan everything. It, it, it can it can really mess it up for everyone. So, uh, um, of course, uh, uh, um, um, we, we, we've had some of these discussions and I understand, again, sometimes things do happen, but please make sure that you are sort of 100% confirmed for the trip before making any payments to us, right? Uh, uh, we, we've, yeah, we've had some messages come in that you know, are sometimes not that nice, right? Uh, uh, we are a very reputable company. I want to make sure that we are putting forth the best product for you all. Well, well, let me let me let me address that now. From what I what I've been hearing, because you know, I, I asked how's the things going, what's, what's what's going on, and to those of you who paid uh, money. And then I, whatever the terms that you signed, because like I said, no money comes to me. It don't. You try to go to payment processors and say uh, the company's a scam so you can get your money back. Um, that is very despicable. And then you know why I say it's despicable is because if you felt there's something you want, didn't want to do, you shouldn't have paid a dime. You shouldn't say, hey, that's not for me right now. I'll do something another time. Um, saying that the company is a scam. I don't deal with scammy people. So if you are saying they're a scam, then you that's kind of putting me on there because it's coming through me. And I don't deal with scammy people whatsoever. I've been hearing stories about, you know, so some of y'all cussing people out. Why are you cussing people out? Why? That is like, like y'all don't realize how how low and, and, and it's just, I can't stand that. And yeah, and, and and for what I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, okay, and I don't want him speaking on anything, I'm going to speak on it. What I'm hearing is people that's even older than me that's doing this. Now, one thing I can't stand, I told y'all that, our older people are supposed to be teaching people like me and younger than me how to be, giving us wisdom, you know, uh, having some decorum, you know, being who they want to be. And some of y'all don't have that. And this is why you wonder why some people don't respect y'all, the younger people, I'm going to say. Because look how you acting. You know, I mean, you you of all people should know how to do some business, right? You shouldn't be cussing nobody out. And nobody did you anything to be cussed out, right? It's just, hey, you this was offered. You either choose to do it or not do it. And it's not the majority of people who's doing this, correct? No, no, it's not the majority, of course. They're, okay, they're I want to make sure. So it's yeah. not the majority. It's just certain people. And, and 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 that just gets on my nerves because I don't even and it puts me in a position of saying having to even apologize, not to say I did anything, but dog. I mean, these people are coming through my platform, but we we have some things to fix some of that uh, maybe another time. But with that being said, yes, when they the reason why he's saying no refunds is because when you plan these big things, you have to have a certain amount, and de you you deal with airlines, you deal with hotels, you deal with all the different people, and then. When somebody say, oh, well, I need my re I need a refund back. Well, you kind of messing the whole thing up for everybody at that point, because they told the people this amount. Now you backing out and you messing the numbers up. And it's like that's why you're saying that. Because see, they better than me, because if, if I had put on something my, like myself is coming through me, ain't no refunds. So you better believe if you're ready to do that, then you need to do it. <laughs> OK, they will be nice to you by giving you a deposit back. But, you know, hey. We don't want them kind of people on no trip. So good. They gone. God bless them. But the people that are going, you know, or the people that want to go to 10 people that may want to go um, get with the brother, you know, uh, uh, sign up. We always run that for a reason. Sign up. Yes, I will be there because I think somebody else told you that Phil won't be there. Would they tell you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people were asking that some people were saying, yeah, it's, of course, yeah. Yes, I will be in Ghana. Yes, I will have a meet and greet with the people. Yes, Phil got other things he got to do too. But yes, I will have a meet and greet. I think every trip we've ever done, we had a meet and greet. So um, it's not one time that we didn't do that. So yes, to clear the air. Yes, it will be a meet and greet. I will be able to shake your hand and, and you can meet you know my, my, my team that travels with me and all of that. So yes, I will be there. Um, Kwaku, um, one question also somebody may ask, are we talking about people coming to the United States? 
about the homes. Um, will they be explained how, because most people in America, let's call it what it is, don't have $300,000 as you mentioned, uh, to just go buy a home like that. Yeah. Most people in America are used to the mortgage system, right? So, and I know on your website, y'all do have that, but the interest rates is different, much different than here in America. Yeah. Um, would the banks explain that process, you know, on, on the trip, just people that may be interested? Because let's say they don't want a home. Let's say they want a condo or an apartment. Um, yeah. Do they explain that? Yeah. And so I also want to be clear just to jump it off that we do sell even land for $5,000. So for those that, you know, want to, buy a piece of land and then build over a period of time. We have that as an option. We have off plan units, which are not fully built units, which are typically cheaper than fully built units, right? Uh, and so you can buy into them at a much cheaper price. For example, you can pay for, you know, uh, about 70,000 for maybe a, a, a you know, a, um, a one bed in certain developments in, in Accra as well. Right. Uh, but, but of course, uh, um, our mortgage system is not the same as the United States system, right? And and this is part of some of the realities on the ground. And most banks, unfortunately, do not provide mortgages to 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 anyone that is not a Ghanaian or married to a Ghanaian. But there is one bank that does, or actually a few banks that do, right? Provide to this, and so we always have them on the on the tour, right? Uh, we, we usually have a, a workshop on the first day where we introduce everybody to this bank and we work with this bank on closing transactions for other African-Americans as well, right? Uh, the interest rates are a, a bit high, you know, they, are, they range uh, uh, between uh, 11 to 15%, right? But it's on, let's say a 50,000 or hundred thousand dollar home. So it's it, it, in that sense, it's not as expensive, right? Especially paying it over 15 years. Uh, uh, but of course I understand that it is, higher than it is uh, in, the, in the States. Uh, uh, but as I noted, we have homes for $50,000, two to three bedroom homes, right? $50,000, right? I don't know where you find that in the United States, right? And so this is how you also have to look at it, where, where if you don't have the cash today, you could potentially maybe just buy land, build over a period of time, or you could pay, you know, what we call payment plans, right? So over two to three years, pay out uh, um, a property, right? Uh, 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 it's like a fifty or $100,000 property over two to three years, right? And so a lot of real estate developers are very flexible with this. I will say all of these things are changing and transforming. You know, there are banks that we are speaking to in the United States who want to offer mortgages to African-Americans who want to buy property in Ghana and in Africa. Uh, in fact, uh, one mortgage bank we're, we're talking to now already does that for Americans that want to buy property in the Caribbean. And so they want to offer the same for those looking to buy in Ghana. And so what is happening, and it's a shift, there are things happening that even I don't know, right? Uh, but certainly in the real estate sector, what I can tell you is that there's a massive shift now of, of, of uh, sort of capital know-how that is coming into the continent, not just Ghana, but Ghana is certainly one of the, the key, key places now. Right. And, and what's happening uh, um, um, with conversation, some of the conversations I'm having with celebrities, with NBA players, right, uh, NFL stars uh, who are interested in building, you know, communities, whole communities in Ghana, uh, uh, in, in Nigeria, et cetera. Uh, uh, it's it's something that is sort of really fantastical, even to me, you know, thinking as a Ghanaian, maybe even 10 years ago as to what I, I thought was possible. Um, and really, it's just because of what the, what, what happened with the year of return. It sparked something there. Um, and so and so I, to, to point that out, yes, there are some realities on the ground. Uh, and there are still opportunities now for those that can afford it, right, uh, in terms of payment plans, in terms of maybe low, uh, just buying land or maybe paying with a mortgage uh, a bank today. And it will all improve over the future. I think as we sort of uh, continue to uh, um, sort of uh, – sort of create that perception that there can be positive outcomes in on the continent. I think that will just change. Sometimes it is sometimes mind the mind over anything else that we all know that, Hey, we're going to build this together uh, and it'll happen. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident of that. So yeah, just a, a long way to answer that question. There are ways to finance a home uh, and there are also cheaper uh, sort of a, a relatively cheaper uh, units out there that people can potentially afford today. You're right. You really are not going to get a $50,000 home too much and not a new one in, in America at all. Yeah. So 
So basically, you know, he said some things I didn't even know, you know, so if you want to get some land, he say five thousand dollars. If you want to get um, some some homes and, and pay over, over time, I mean, hey, it's, it's opportunities. And why not? I tell you all so much that just go see it for yourself. Try it yourself. You know, you know, get you get if you want land. You can go ahead and buy that. I mean, now with the situation of land, let me clear that up. All that's done through uh, the banks and the title company. Well, I don't know about, you know, I'm talking American language, but it's done through the banks, lawyers and all of that. All the permits been cleared. Nobody can come behind and say, this is my land. Everything's good, correct? 100 percent, 100 percent. And well, as I said, we'll have lawyers on there to discuss with you. We'll have some people from the government as well who can provide you with their assurances as well. There's a lot happening in terms of even digitizing the systems there. Right to mm -hmm. make sure that all of it is is uh, is a uh, uh, sort of a uh, very transparent and pure, right? Uh, um, and uh, we'll work with the sort of uh, the police as well and all of these things as well to make sure everything is executed right. Right at the end of the day, yes, there are people there who wish to do harm, wish to do sort of scamming and fraud. They're 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 they are out there, and it's our job to make sure that these things do not happen for our clients, right? And so, uh, um, uh, working with uh, our partners on the ground. We'll ensure that everything is vetted before uh, any purchase is made. All right, that's all I wanted to make sure to get get you get you on on, on camera saying that. Cause you know, like I said, if, if, if something go down, you know they you know they coming after you, right? Yes, sir. No, I know. And then I'm gonna have to come after you. Then you ain't gonna like how I come after you. No, so no, you no. I, I'm seated. I don't. I don't want it. I don't want it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see some of the properties and, and, and myself. Um, you know, what would the, what they have to offer? Because you know, I'm only looking to expand African Diaspora News Channel. You know, I already got my eye on one, one location. I'm, exp we're going to expand to next year in the continent. But hey, we can look at what, what Ghana has to offer as well. Why not? You know, I'm a firm believer of that. So, um, yeah, we're, we're open. I'll say one of my, one of the things I, I'm really happy about is that you're you're going to be there on the ground and, and to meet with all of these different people and stakeholders and really also yourself as well. Obviously, see the opportunities there in Ghana. Obviously, it's it's my motherland. I'm very proud of uh, of, of at least where, where we are today. But I also understand that fundamentally we need a lot of help and guidance and partnerships to really grow it to the next level. And so, yeah, really happy that you all are, are, are going to be there. And, and to wrap this up, so I know y'all have a Joloff war with Nigeria, correct? Yeah, Ghana's the best. <laughs> yeah, I have some Nigerian Joloff, um, and, and and actually I have some neighbors that are Nigerian. Yeah, okay, and I good. said, hey, I said, you know what? I want to try y'all Joloff. I said, because I'm going to Ghana in October, I'm going to try that one. So I tried Joloff. It was my first time trying Joloff, and it, it was good and spicy. I'm like, but you know, I, I'm, I, my family comes from Louisiana, so I'm used to hot food. So I love yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Um, but uh, so I'm looking to, I'm looking forward to trying whoever, whoever make the best Joe Law, you got to point me in any direction, say, hey, you need to go over here. They the best. So <laughs> I'm definitely looking to try Joe Law. Yes, sir. No, we'll, we'll, we'll bring you a big plate. Don't worry. Uh, uh, and uh, you, you'll love it. And we'll, we'll make, we'll, depending on obviously your, your taste, we'll also have you try some other things. Ghana has a lot of delicacies out there for different types of palates. Uh, um, and sort of there's lots of Kenke, Wache, you know, different things that uh, I think. Uh, but the only thing, only thing, Kwaku, the only thing by me, well, I ain't kind of committed to that. The only thing by me, I just don't eat, I don't eat no, no kind of meats. So, you oh, know, okay. I'm more, yeah, I'm doing very, very strict, you know, uh, plant based. So, yeah, I don't do the meats. <laughs> well, there's some, there, well, you know, what's actually up? There's some great vegetables. But if you got some great plantains, point me in the direction. Hey, that's exactly what I was thinking. There's some yeah, great I like plantains. Yes, sir. Killy Willie. That's what a different All right, I need that too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, well, Kwaku, thank you for, for uh, coming and coming to clear some things up, brother. Um, and, and yeah, we would definitely uh, appreciate you. And you know, man, we we man, time passing so fast, man. We we be seeing you shortly. Yes, sir. You'll be seeing me right there uh, and in color. So real real pleasure to sort of being on here. We are very grateful for this partnership and it's something that we really wish to grow with you and with your audience as well uh, to help for the benefit of Ghana, but also the continent as a whole. So I uh, really thank you for having us. All right, brother. Well, you, you take care and um, you know, yeah, y'all, you know, they got, y'all heard what was going on. You heard about opportunities to get land and, and, and homes is $50,000 and up. You can pay payments, et cetera. Well, like I said, now you got more information that I didn't even have. 
And um, so, yeah, make sure you sign up, you know, make it a family trip. You know, I took my family to South Africa. There was about what, six people I took. So, shoot, that's just one family. Right. So just, you know, that's a couple of families right there. One or two families. And, and they can have this trip all, all wrapped up. So, uh, brother, we thank you for uh, coming by. We'll see you on next. Cecil Global and African Diaspora News Channel presents the Ghana Luxury Property Tour. It will be a eight day tour coming to you starting October 1 through October 8, 2023. Now you enjoy a five star stay at a hotel, the finest properties in Ghana. You connect with industry professionals. You will also visit cultural landmarks, have a meet and greet with the team and so much more. Make sure that you go to the description box below and hit that link, just sign up.